Netflix just released a new spy action movie last week, and I had no idea until I logged in to finally watch Viking Wolf and saw this film at the top of the movie chart. I somehow missed this film's entire marketing, and it appears most people have as well. Still, I decided Viking Wolf would just have to wait another day, because I needed to watch Heart of Stone and find out if it is any good. And the answer is no. Sadly, Heart of Stone is more in common with Red Notice than it does with Extraction 2. It's not fair to call this movie horrendous or a cinematic war crime, because there are some mildly entertaining action sequences and some partially interesting concepts, even if those concepts are never developed to any meaningful extent. What Heart of Stone is, is generic. There are a couple of major issues which stood out to me pretty much right away concerning the aspects of plot and dialogue. One of the most annoying story weaknesses on display here is that the strengths, abilities, and general competence of these spies seems to vary from action sequence to action sequence, with these supposed top-class spies making rookie mistakes just so the movie could happen. There are also character decisions that just don't make sense. Like this scene, where the Gal Gadot agent gets her team to leave her behind by pretending to sprain her ankle. Bear in mind, they just found out they are being observed by enemy spies, and the getaway vehicle is right there. Why would this other female agent not just help Gal Gadot agent across those couple yards to the safety of the getaway vehicle? So the movie could happen. There's also some baffling dialogue, such as this scene. Chance of success just plummeted. Only because you've got no imagination. Now, the odds are being calculated by this borderline magical MacGuffin supercomputer thingy called the heart. And she knows that. So why would she tell the guy just wetting the odds that he's the one with no imagination? It's a line that sounds kind of cool and railery for a second, but it makes no sense at all within the context of this scene. And that, I think, is the core issue with Heart of Stone, the reason for its mediocrity. The characters, plot, dialogue, and even the mildly cool action sequences feel as if they were designed solely because they half-looked or half-sounded cool and eye-catching but in reality they are just tired, tried, and uninteresting. They have a halo jump in the style of Mission Impossible Fallout, only CGI, and not as good. They even have a sequence where the hero and villain characters are falling through the air, and the villain character gets knocked out, and the hero saves them while they are hurtling towards the ground. Which is, of course, taken straight from Mission Impossible Fallout. And the movie's reliance on these rubber weak aspects means that it never develops beyond them. When the Gal Gadot agent has to make a choice between her mission and her team, there is no real emotional impact when she chooses her team, because we don't know her team, we don't know her, and we don't know the mission. When one of her team members betrays her, there is a bit of emotion, but not nearly as much as there should be, because, once again, we don't know any of these characters particularly well. Heart of Stone feels like a franchise film, specifically mid-franchise film. Nowadays, Mission Impossible movies have large casts and quick paces, but those casts were built up over several movies across multiple decades. Heart of Stone bites off more than it can chew, way more than it can chew, by trying to tell in a single, world-introducing movie what should be told in something more akin to a trilogy or even a longer series of films. What only excavates this problem is the breakneck runtime, with the movie itself ending under two hours. Normally movies these days are too long, but in this rare case, there really wasn't enough of a runtime for the movie to tell the story it wanted to. The result of this is that the characters and devices must become paper shells. The MacGuffin quantum supercomputer known as The Heart is particularly stupid because, as I said earlier, it is essentially a magical tool that does whatever the pot needs it to, 
It has as many strengths as the plot needs it to, and it has as many weaknesses as the plot needs it to. Its purpose in this movie is somewhat similar to that of the Entity in Dead Reckoning, but the Entity actually had partially defined limits. The villain is completely two-dimensional. The heroine is rather passive and somehow doesn't manage to do much. The supporting cast is equally one note, across the board. So, in my opinion, Heart of Stone is just the latest in a long line of dull, mediocre, and action movies. I give this movie 4 shaken not stirred martinis out of 10. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will be back soon.